In section 17.2, we're going to look at problems involving springs that store up energy. Back in the unit where we covered energy, we discussed elastic potential energy, but we did not talk about how to calculate it. Because elastic objects have a restoring force, any work that is done on the spring can then get uh, can then get recovered later as kinetic energy. So we can store up energy in a spring as elastic potential energy. We can also store up elastic potential energy in any elastic object that we can then get back as kinetic energy. For the case of a spring, we can work out a, a formula for the elastic potential energy stored, and it is given as one-half kx squared. So again, k is the uh, spring constant or force constant for the spring. It's particular to the spring that we're, uh, uh, that's involved in the problem. x is either the stretch or the compression distance. And EPE, just like any kind of energy, is measured in joules. And here it is super important that you are in the standard units, so you get out the standard units. So you need to be in newtons per meter for K, and you need to be in units of meters for X. So let's look at this example. Here we have a two kilogram cart initially moving with a speed of 10 meters per second, and then it collides with an ideal spring with a spring constant of 55,000 newtons per meter and a natural length of 20 centimeters. If we are ignoring friction, drag, and any other energy losses when the cart collides with the spring, uh, in part A, we are asked to find the length of the spring at its maximum compression. So for this, we want to look at energy. So if we can figure out how much energy we start with, account for any energy that gets added to the system as work, account for any energy lost by the system, then we know what energy we have left over that gets stored up in, in the spring. It said there's no uh, non-conservative forces that are doing work adding energy, and it specifically says to ignore the types of forces that would cause a loss. So the initial energy is going to be equal to the final energy. Energy is going to be conserved. The system starts with kinetic energy because the cart starts uh, in, in a state that's moving. And then at the very end, at maximum compression, the cart is going to come to rest, and all of that initial kinetic energy is then stored up in the spring as elastic potential energy. We have formulas for each of these quantities. Kinetic energy is one-half times mass times speed squared. And elastic potential energy, we just learned, is one-half K times X squared. We can eliminate the one halves, and now we can solve for x. So if we solve for x squared, we'll get mv squared over k. We can plug in values here, and the mass was given as 2, the speed was given as 10, and the value of k was given as 55,000. And when you plug this into the calculator, you get 0 0.00363. Uh, I should note that here I calculated x squared. So to get x by itself, we need to take the square root of this, and that will get us x. So when we take the square root, I get 0 0.06. Now that's a distance, so that's measured in meters. And we should note that this, this value of x, that's the compression distance. That's not what we wanted. We want to know the length. So uh, this in centimeters is, is 6 centimeters. The spring starts as 20 centimeters. So the length of the spring is going to be that 20 centimeters minus the 6 centimeters that it is compressed. So at the very end, the, um, the length of the spring is reduced to 14 centimeters. For part B, what's the net force acting on the cart at this time? Well, there the force is going to be the spring force, which is calculated with K times X. The value of K is given as 55,000 newtons per meter, and so we're going to uh, multiply this by the uh, compression distance x, but we want to make sure that we use the value in meters so that meters cancels 
here and here, leaving us with units of newtons. And calculating this out, we end up getting 3,300 newtons. And for our last example, we have a bungee jumper that's going to jump from a height of 100 meters using a bungee cord with an unstretched length of 30 meters and a spring constant K of 51 newtons per meter. Part A wants us to find the maximum mass that a jumper could safely experience the jump, ignoring any loss of energy. So if we're ignoring any losses of energy, and there's no uh, non-conservative forces to do any work on our system, then energy is going to be conserved. The type of energy that the system starts with is gravitational potential energy, and that gets converted into elastic potential energy as the bungee cord stretches. I can expand out both sides of this equation. I know GPE is MGH. Elastic potential energy is 1 half kx squared, and now I can solve for my value of m. Solving for m, I'm going to take the 1 half kx squared, and I'm going to divide that by g and h, and then plug in values. k is given as 51 x is going to be the stretch distance. Now the bungee cord does not start stretching until it, it has uh, reached its equilibrium length of 30 meters. And if the, uh, if the bungee jumper gets to the ground but does not, uh, isn't moving when it gets to the ground, then they're gonna be okay. And that, in that case, the bungee cord will have stretched 70 meters. It, was, it, stretch, it falls till it reaches 30 meters and then it can stretch another 70 before the um, jumper hits the ground. G has a value of 10 and the initial height was given as 100. This works out to be a mass of 125 kilograms, uh, which is about 275 uh, pounds. Now, uh, part B wants to know what's the acceleration expressed in G's that the jumper would experience at the bottom of the jump. Well, at the bottom of the jump, the bungee cord is pulling up, and we can model that as a spring force, and then the uh, bungee jumper's weight would be pulling down. We can find the acceleration by finding the net force and dividing it by mass. The net force will be the spring force minus the weight. The spring force will be given by K times X, and the weight will be given by M times G. And we can plug in numbers. K was 51. X was 70. Mass was 125. G is 10. We can divide this whole thing by M, and this is going to work out to be about 2.8 meters per second squared. Sorry, 28, 28 meters per second squared, and that converts to be about 2.8 Gs. So about 2.8 times as heavy as the person normally 